Golf Destination is brought to you in part by Goslings of Bermuda, the taste of Bermuda. This week on Golf Destination, presented by Goslings of Bermuda, we visit with the Colo Amateur of the U.S. Open, Matt Parziali. Plus, we'll talk to Matt's teacher, Sean Hester. We'll look at one of the most prestigious tournaments in the U.S., the Northeast Amateur. Plus, we'll visit the Samoset Resort in Camden, Maine. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Golf Destination, presented by Goslings of Bermuda. I'm Larry Soares. Amateur golfer Matt Parziali has had an incredible year winning the Mass Amateur, the U.S. Mid-Amateur, and now garnering Colo Amateur at the U.S. Open at Shinnecock Hills. We spoke with Matt as he played at the Northeast Amateur at Wanamoiset Country Club in Rhode Island. From Blackton, Massachusetts, we welcome Matt Paziel. You have the honor. Play away, please. Brockton firefighter Matt Parziali on a whirlwind golf fantasy ride. Just three days after tying for low amateur at the U.S. Open, he teed it up at the prestigious Northeast Amateur at Wanamoisa Country Club in Rumford, Rhode Island. You exhausted or what? Oh, yeah, absolutely. But uh, I, I love it here. Uh, I wouldn't miss this tournament. This is one of my favorites of the year, so uh, happy to be here, and maybe we'll get some rest tonight and try to play a little better tomorrow. Juan Amoisit, never a stroll in the park, but few courses can compare to a U.S. Open at Shinnecock. I played pretty conservatively. Um, I had a lot of a lot of chances to make birdie there. I just didn't, you don't want to be too aggressive because you get too aggressive, they go they go the other way and it's a, it's a, it can be a big number. It only happened to me a couple times. I made, I think, three doubles. I could probably minimize those, but uh, the course is so difficult that uh, to escape with only those, it was it was pretty good. Wish I could have finished that Saturday round a little better. Um, I, I really played well that day, and to make that mistake on 16 and make double there uh, was a little disappointing. But that's what that course does. You saw everyone having trouble on Saturday, so um, and then to have a good finish on Sunday, the last five holes after playing eight through 13, five over to finish one under there was uh, was good and I had five birdie opportunities all five could have went in but I was fortunate enough to make one of them I had so much fun um, I've always wanted to compete at that level and to do it at the Masters early in the year and then have a second chance at the Open um, I felt really good at the Masters I felt like I could compete I just didn't play well and I'm really happy that I was able to play well last week and um, make the cut and have a decent weekend as well Playing well going into the Open, did that help? I mean, you seem to be playing well. It did. I won the Hornblower. Uh, that was early June, and then I was at Fisher's Island for the Fisher's Island Invitational and won that just before going to Shinnecock. So winning, winning breeds confidence. I went in there. I felt good. Uh, I stuck to my game plan even when things were going wrong, and I think that's why I had some success. When Parziali is on the course or in the tournament, there's no time for him to just take it all in. Playing on Father's Day. Yeah. Yeah, he, we uh, we had a good time. You know, that's we didn't talk about it. That's not what we do. We were there to um, to play and to compete. Uh, but we'll look back, and that'll be a good memory to have. But uh, we wouldn't have it any other way. We're out there. It's all business. Uh, you heard people saying Happy Father's Day, but for the most part, we're just trying to do our thing and try to do the best we can. And Parzi Alley, who had a lot of exposure at the Masters, despite missing the cut, became a media darling at the U.S. Open on his way to tying for low amateur. The support from everyone's been great, um, from the city, from the fire department, the mayor, the chief, Thorny Lee, um, Mass Golf, Old Sandwich, everyone's just been incredible. Um, it's been a lot of fun and I try to reach out to everyone and respond with thank you texts, but sometimes it gets a little too much, but uh, doing my best. The golfing fantasy ride for the former pro who eventually got his amateur status back and now is a Brockton firefighter all started with his miraculous run at the 2017 U.S. Med-Am. But make no mistake, there has been a price to pay. You know, it's more just balancing life. Um, everything happened this year. I'm getting married, we're building a house. I got a puppy just before the U.S. Mid-Am. Um, he's fine now, but when I was away uh, back in November and December to leave him with uh, 
the other dog in Alley was a lot on her and she's been incredible. So I think just balancing life has been the biggest thing, but I'm having a blast to be able to do this and to compete in all these events. It's, it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. The ride of a lifetime means another week of competing against the top golfers in the world, both amateur and professional. I'm Don Coyne reporting. Next, we meet Sean Hester, Matt's swing coach. Sean has been at the U.S. Open three out of the last five years with Rob Oppenheim and Fran Quinn, who both also made the cut. Sean joins us to talk about this past U.S. Open at Shinnecock Hills. I met Matt at Shinnecock on Monday and we went out to play. And uh, it's important to note that Matt had been playing very well. He won a tournament in New Jersey. Uh, he won the Travers in New Jersey. He also won the Hornblower. So Matt's been playing well and he's on his game. So as a teacher, I'm looking to see what he's doing well there and, and certainly uh, answer any questions he might have. Uh, things had been going really well on Monday. He played very well. He was asking me a few questions about chipping and pitching and uh, wanted some tips on bunkers. So those are the things we worked on on Tuesday. He went out to play. Again, he hit the ball really well Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday and felt he was really prepared and looking good going into Thursday. Uh, I don't say much to him at all unless he asks me questions. Uh, Matt's not a guy who's looking for a lot of input there. Uh, we, w we did discuss on Sunday that it was a little warmer on the range and the air was definitely a little lighter, it wasn't as humid, and the ball would be going further. Uh, we don't really talk too much about strategy unless he has specific questions. You can get overwhelmed at a U.S. Open trying to over-prepare and over-analyze the golf course and the green structures. Every single hole and every single green at Shinnecock presented huge challenges. Every hole had a false front. Every side of the greens had runoffs. So if you try to over-prepare for that, uh, you can get yourself paralysis by analysis and you're really going to leave yourself stuck. You know, at the end of the day, you just have to hit good golf shots. And we try to keep it as simple as we can. And that was Matt's focus. He's like, hey, if I hit a good shot, I'm gonna get a good result. And if I hit a poor shot, I'm gonna get a poor result. And that's basically what's gonna happen in the US Open. You really gotta hit good golf shots. Well, I'm, I'm obviously taking a look at him to see how he's reacting and to see how much control he has and to see how well he's keeping his composure and poise. And that's probably the biggest takeaway that I have. I was super impressed. I felt like Matt played that U.S. Open as though he had played 10 U.S. Opens. And of course we know that was his first U.S. Open and he really played like a veteran. Uh, he maintained his composure and poise extremely well playing with the best players in the world. Played with Steve Stricker the last day. Uh, had a little bit of a hiccup on 13 where he was in the fescue twice and he made a six on that hole. And it was great to see him close the tournament playing the last five holes of the U.S. Open one under par. Ray Floyd, who won at Shinnecock in 1986, had a famous quote saying that there are no venues like the U.S. Open that will produce more bogeys in the last nine holes of a tournament. And to see Matt play his first U.S. Open and finish it off in style, playing the last five holes one under, to tie for low amateur honors was really a gratifying experience. It was a lot of fun to watch. I was very proud of him. He did a great job. Known as the Masters of Amateur Golf, the Northeast Amateur is ranked at number four out of 700 amateur events. Don Coyne fields this report on its rich history. The 57th Northeast Amateur teed off June 20th at historical Wanamoise Country Club in Rumford. Traditionally one of the top amateur tournaments in the world, at this par 69 Donald Ross gem. And I get the question a lot, who's the big name this year? And you know, a, a lot of um, folks haven't heard of any of the names or, or players in our field. Um, but without question, a few of these guys will go on to do unbelievable things at the professional level, track such a great field. And we will be, uh, once the field quality stats come out, the number one pure invitational amateur event um, 
in the world, which makes us very proud, makes me very proud of the field we've been able to get together. You know, continue to build on the great history uh, that the Northeast Dam has, and an awesome field this year. I'm just so happy uh, how it all came together with eight guys coming off the U.S. Open this year. Uh, our defending champion, Colin Morikawa, who uh, likely will be the number one player, amateur player in the world. So many big names in the field, including first team All-Americans Justin Sue and Colin Marikawa, along with the two low amateurs at the recent U.S. Open, Louis Gagne, along with Matt Parziali. I love it here. Um, I wouldn't miss this tournament. This is one of my favorites of the year. The other to make the cut at the U.S. Open, Will Grimmer in the field, as is 2016 Mid-Am champ Stuart Hagestad. Two first team All-Americans, eight players who took part the week before in the U.S. Open, six U.S. and three international participants in the upcoming Palmer Cup with a chance to hone their games against a top-notch field, including first-team All-American USC's Justin Sue. I don't look at the, the field or the, the tee sheet or anything like that. I just I know that most of the guys here, um, just coming off of the tournament at Sunny Hana, like most of the guys talk about, oh, like I'll see you at Northeast. Um, so for the most part, we know we know kind of like the depth of the field that it's going to be here, and it's always a strong field. So that's what we're kind of expecting. I'm really excited to be here. Tons of friends that have played in this tournament have really heard great things. Par 69, but this course is hard, and you got to you got to be really good. You got to hit the ball well, and if you don't, you have to have a really good short game. Yeah, Wanna Moist and Humble's a lot of great players. The greens are just a little faster, the rough's just a little longer, the pins might be just a little more tricky than we're used to, and, and you put it all together along with some, you know, maybe expectations that are a little too high. It just makes it really, really challenging. And, you know, you add that with, uh, you know, one of the top amateur fields that you'll see all summer, um, you know, it just uh, it makes for an awesome week. A field in the past that has seen many who would go on to win PGA tournaments and major championships, including world number one Dustin Johnson and former number one Jordan Spieth. The list of former participants is incredibly impressive. It's hard to look at the list of our past participants and, and not be amazed by the, the guys that have come out and played in the Northeast Dam. Uh, last night we recognized the, the 30th anniversary of Brett Quigley, the last Rhode Islander to win. You know, Brett was talking about how guys on tour, how, how fondly they speak of Juana Moisit in the Northeast Dam when they played and, you know, going back to the guys that played in the 70s and the 80s like John Cook and, and uh, Scott Hoke and Hal Sutton. Um, but then you look at more recent years with, with Dustin Johnson and 11 years ago that he won. It's, it's awesome. And, you know, when we look back 10 years from now, it'll probably be saying the same thing about some of the guys we're seeing here this week. Someone in this field will be the next big name in golf. I'm Don Coyne for Golf Destinations. Welcome back to Golf Destination, presented by Goslings of Bermuda. I'm Larry Soares. Sean Hester returns now to give us some advice on how to prep for your local tournament. Hi, I'm Sean Hester, teaching professional at Charles River Country Club, here today with a couple of tournament helpful hints. One of the things I've noticed watching these best players in the world is when they're inside 150 yards from the hole, the swings they're making are very compact. I like to call them armpit to armpit, rib cage to rib cage in length. They're not making big swings with short clubs. If you were looking for more control in your game and trying to hit more greens, keep your swing shorter with the shorter clubs. When you get inside 150 yards, there should be no such thing as a full swing. Unless you're going to an elevated green and you're hitting to a front bunker, you know, trying to carry that front bunker, the pins cut close. Okay, then you can make a full swing because that's going to generate speed and spin will get the ball up into the air. That's fine. But most of the time, you're better off flighting the ball, keeping it down, getting the ball going forward and straight. In order to do that, think armpit to armpit for the length of your swings, especially with your eight iron, nine iron, and wedges. You know, uh, most golfers get fired up about tournaments. They're all excited. Uh, everybody's nervous. The thing is to focus on executing golf shots. Where do you need to put your ball to uh, have the best possible chance to succeed? 
We live in New England. Uh, it's a Donald Ross area, which means you need to be below the hole. So when you're playing in golf tournaments, think about where you want your ball positioned on the green. If you're below the hole, you have a much better chance to chip up or putt into the hole. That's what you're looking to do. It's all about strategy and keeping things as simple as you can. You want to make sure that your ball's in a position from where you can play from. And when you get in those situations where your ball's in a position where you can't play from, try to get below the hole where you can get back in business. Welcome back to Golf Destination, presented by Goslings of Bermuda. Maine is known as Vacation Land, and there is no better spot than the Samoset Resort on Penobscot Bay. The Samoset Resort is located in Rockport, Maine, located on 230 acres overlooking Penobscot Bay. The original Samoset was built in 1889. It burned down in 72 and the existing structure was built in 74, but we have maintained and expanded the golf course over those years and it's just bigger and better than before. We have 18 beautiful holes of championship golf and most of those are overlooking the ocean. Um, there's beautiful vistas on some other holes, but it's just a gorgeous course to play and it's very convenient because it's on property. You don't have to go anywhere. You walk over to the pro shop and tee off. Golf Digest. In the mid-90s, they were rating the most beautiful golf courses in America. And at that time, they ranked us number five. We've had some interesting comments. One lady uh, one year was standing on the first tee and she asked the ranger what lake that was out there. And he responded by saying Lake Atlantic. We get people from all over the country that come here. And a lot of them are from the Midwest, down south. They've never been on the ocean before. We have added a lot of length to the golf course over the past 14 years. Our 18th hole at one time was rated the toughest finishing hole in New England. Three is a very hard hole over the ocean. Four runs along the ocean. And 14, you tee off in the woods and you end up literally right down on the rocks of the ocean. Penobscot Bay is known as the sailing capital of the world. So there's plenty of day sails that you can go out on either from Rockland, Rockport, or Camden. There's beautiful hiking at Camden Hill State Park nearby. There's some wineries. There's plenty of shopping in downtown in the village of Rockland, Rockport, and Camden as well. There are very few places in Maine where there's lodging and golf that are in a single property. So you can stay right here, have a fantastic meal, and play one of Maine's greatest golf courses. Well, I hope you enjoyed this edition of Golf Destination, featuring the second teams as Meredith enjoys her vacation in Greece. If you want to learn more about us and follow us every day online, you can visit golfdestination.tv or visit our social media channels at Golf Destination. I'm Larry Soares. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on Golf Destination.
golf destination is brought to you in part by Gosling's of Bermuda, the taste of Bermuda. The Preserve, New England's only four season sporting community. Avidia Bank. Delta, keep climbing. Presented by Sociable, original social media programming.